Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where today it's another Mythos Monday. Yes, Mythos Monday, the day we talk about all things Lovecraft and Lovecraft related here at the Stately Vaughn Manor. And today we're going to be talking about this book. And this book, actually, this is all one book. Uh, this is the biography of H.P. Lovecraft by S.T. Joshi. This is I Am Providence. Uh, a very, very big biography, obviously. It's over a thousand pages, which is why it's on in uh, these two volumes here. I will just hold one. Uh, this biography is a version of a biography that S.T. Joshi, the famous Lovecraft scholar S.T. Joshi, it's a version of the biography that he wrote uh, that was released before under the title, I believe it was Lovecraft, A Life. I'm pretty sure that's what it was called. There have been a couple different versions of this. There was a, a, a much shorter version. There was Lovecraft, A Life. And this, the two-volume set, I Am Providence. Now, the two-volume set is the whole thing. The earlier version was the cut version. This is a very, very long biography. S.T. Joshi really, really is the best person to do a biography of Lovecraft. S.T. Joshi knows more about Lovecraft than probably anybody else in the world <laughs> ever has. He's read everything Lovecraft wrote. He's read every letter that Lovecraft wrote. And Lovecraft wrote a lot of letters. I mean, just an incredible amount of letters. And that's why we know so much about Lovecraft. There is a lot of information about this guy. I sometimes think that people have a lot of erroneous assumptions about H.P. Lovecraft. One of those assumptions being that he was sort of this mysterious character, uh, this aloof, mysterious character that maybe we didn't know a heck of a lot about. We know just about everything about H.P. Lovecraft because he was so forthcoming. Uh, he actually had a lot of friends, H.P. Lovecraft. A lot of them he didn't ever see personally. Uh, most of them were correspondents. Although there were uh, uh, quite a few friends that he did see uh, personally quite often. But he had a wide circle of friends whom he corresponded with, including uh, such great writers as Robert E. Howard and Clark Ashton Smith, among others. And he wrote letters to everybody Vast amounts of letters. And so we know pretty much every detail of H.P. Lovecraft's life. He wrote it all up. Uh, a lot of his letters, they're, they contain his philosophical musings. They contain his opinions about politics, his opinions about literature. But they also have a lot of biographical information. He talks a lot about his daily life and his letters. So S.T. Joshi had a lot to work with. So if you're interested in H.P. Lovecraft, if you're interested in, okay, I want to know more about this guy who wrote these horrifying stories and why his stories were so weird. What made this guy write this stuff? You can get your answers, most, most of those answers in this book. Lovecraft certainly was a unique individual. Uh, most people have a pretty limited idea, I think, of Lovecraft. Nowadays, the one thing everybody seems to know about Lovecraft is that he was racist. He was racist, unfortunately. He had a couple... There were a couple bad things about this guy, and that's the worst, frankly. He was really racist. He was xenophobic. He was afraid of anybody who was different. He spent a lot of his life being afraid of things, H.P. Lovecraft. And a lot of his own prejudices and uh, a lot of his own fears, of course, he transformed into horrible monsters uh, and other less savory things, which he populated his fiction with. But there was more to him than that. So even if you don't like this man personally, and that's understandable, he was an interesting person. He did have some interesting views. His life was mostly lived in his mind. So his life isn't full of action and adventure, that's for sure. Although, he did travel quite a bit. 
uh, and he wrote uh, long travelogues of his uh, travels, and he incorporated a lot of his travels into his fiction. That's why a lot of his fiction has such a great sense of place. Uh, a lot of his fiction, it kind of feels like you're right there, and that's why, because he was right there in most of the places he was writing about. Uh, even his made-up places were all based on very real places. Uh, that's why, for example, Innsmouth and Shadow Over Innsmouth, the creepy, decrepit town of Innsmouth, had such a, a sense of reality to it, because it was based on stuff he saw in a town very much like Innsmouth. Not quite as, de quite as decrepit, of course, and not full of, you know, monster fish people, but, you know, based on places he had seen. And he did have some interesting things that happened in his life. His ill-fated marriage, for example. This guy was not suited for marriage, that's for sure, and it was kind of a disaster. It's all chronicled in here. What S.T. Joshi does in this biography, and like I said, it's long. Everything you've ever wanted to know about this guy, you'll get all that and more. It's a pretty exhaustive biography. Because he's taken every letter that he ever did, every bit of biographical information he could find, as T. Joshi did, and he put it all into, this, into these uh, two volumes, into this one giant biography, I Am Providence. And it's a lot. It is entertaining, though. It's kind of fascinating if you're interested in uh, Lovecraft's life or just uh, weird fiction as it was being done at the time that he lived. It's a lot of background information on Weird Tales, the magazine, the other writers he communicated with, uh, most of the exchanges that they had in their letters that were interesting, uh, Joshi mentions them, and also the composition of H.P. Lovecraft's stories. If you want to know why and how he came up with things like At the Mountains of Madness and The Call of Cthulhu, a lot of that you'll find in here, uh, because he talked about it. He talked about all that stuff in his letters. Uh, so. Joshi finds all that, and every story you can find in from background information in this volume about it. So you get information about his life, all the details of his life, uh, his time in New York, his ill-fated marriage, his return to Providence afterward. Uh, there are a couple moments or a couple periods in his life when there just isn't much known uh, because he just wasn't writing much at the time. He had fallen into a bit of a depression at a couple times in his life, right around high school and when he dropped out of high school, for example. Uh, but as much as is known about those uh, periods, it's in here. So, like I said, if you're interested in this guy's life at all, this is the place to go, is this book. There isn't anything even close uh, to being this detailed uh, or this interesting. There are some smaller biographies that I've seen. Um, I'll sprag to camp wrote one a few years ago, which is not that great at all, uh, which was full of de camp's own prejudices. Uh, Joshi has a pretty clear eyed view of who Lovecraft was. Joshi admires a lot of things about Lovecraft, but he can see very clearly all the things that weren't right about this guy. Uh, he doesn't he doesn't, he doesn't gloss over anything. Uh, so all the racist stuff that Lovecraft thought, it's all in here. Uh, Joshi talks all about it. And those things about Lovecraft, you find out kind of the genesis of that. He was raised in a pretty racist family. Um, and he just, as smart as he was, he just never got over it. He should have. It's one of the things about smart people is that sometimes smart people can believe really, really stupid things. It's a sad fact about human beings. Uh, sometimes when you get your mind set on something, especially if it makes you feel, say, superior to others, it's hard changing a person's mind. And that was unfortunately true about this guy. There are signs that he softened up on stuff like that towards the end of his life, but we have no real evidence that he actually did. Sadly, a lot of his political political views did change, though, quite a bit. He was pretty hardcore conservative when he was younger. But as he got older, uh, those views flipped, uh, particularly during the Depression. 
And some of the most poignant moments uh, in this book have to do with his struggles uh, in poverty, because this guy was broke. His family started off well off, uh, but they had lost all their money. His father ended up in an insane asylum. His mom also ended up eventually in an asylum. They bo both his parents died in the same asylum. So he had some issues, this guy, as you can imagine. And then the depression hit and made everything worse. All his economic struggles, uh, which led to, for example, his miserable diet uh, and how he was pretty much nearly starving uh, towards the end of his life, that's all in here. Uh, the really kind of horrific details of his sad death uh, from cancer is in here. That was a rough way to go uh, for this guy. Yeah, that makes difficult reading, but it's all in here. Anything you ever want to know, it's in this biography. Now this, I got the two volume hardcover set from Hippocampus Press, which was published in 2010. Pretty pricey, there were paperback editions of this, I believe. But probably the most economic and easiest way you can get this is uh, as an ebook. It's available as an ebook for cheap, I believe. I don't think it's that expensive. At least it wasn't when I got it. I know it's still available, I checked. So if you are interested in this book or interested in Lovecraft's life, I am Providence. This is the one place you need to go. You really don't need to go to any other biographies after this one. Um, this is the one to get and to read if you're interested. So yeah, I Am Providence by S.T. Joshi, the preeminent H.P. Lovecraft scholar. So that's your Mythos Monday for today. Catch me tomorrow. I have a tag that I'll be doing on Wednesday. It's my Epic Comic Book Wednesday. On Thursday, I think I've got a bit of an unwrapping. Got some packages in. Also got... A couple of announcements, channel announcements of some things I've got coming. Yeah, I've got even more stuff coming. You know, this little brain that's always going. Uh, so there's that. And then I'm going to have, hopefully this week, uh, a, a uh, review of Rebecca by Daphne de Moye. Fantastic book. I just finished it. So I'll be talking about that one. Okay, guys, I will catch you here next time.